The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Us here with realagriculture.com. We are back here today with another Canola School episode, and I'm here with Autumn Barnes, who's an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada based in Lethbridge, Alberta. How is it going today? Wonderful. How are you? Great. So we are here today to talk about some reseeding decisions, especially when it comes to environmental conditions and what producers should be considering if they've had, you know, some of these big detrimental winds across their cotyledon crops. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we have had in southern Alberta, but also across uh, much of the prairies, there's been some pretty significant winds in the past uh, little bit here. So there has been some some fear about um, about little canola cotyledons be- being sandblasted. Um, also some questions around herbicide efficacy. If the weeds get really battered up, how long you need to wait to get back in. Um, I, so far, I mean, the wind just died down for us really today, conveniently for this, for this interview, but... Um, so, so not so much yet in, in reseeding calls from the wind, but I imagine there's going to be some areas of sandier fields or some areas where the, the crop got beat up a little bit. Um, the, the reseeding decisions that I've heard so far really have, have kind of focused around um, heavy flea beetle feeding in some patches of a field, uh, sometimes some cutworms um, just feeding in, in a pretty large way. Um, and then, you know, in the next few days, I know I've had a few calls already. Um, we had some pretty significant rain a couple weeks ago here. Um, I guess maybe 10 week, 10 days ago now. And, uh, and now there's some concerns that, uh, maybe some crops not able to come up if, if there was some crusting on top of the soil. So, um, so I guess, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about receding decisions and how you make them. They're not fun, but it is, it is an important thing to think about. So how do you make that decision? And I know even Manitoba recently faced some frost and right. stuff like that. So how, how do you walk through your crop and decide when it is just not going to come? Yeah, so um, my favorite my favorite tool uh, is the hoop just because you can chuck it and it kind of goes where it wants to go and and you don't just go end up looking at the bad and and the good spots Um, but really it's about getting out putting boots in your field getting out of your truck getting away from the headlands and away from the entrances and getting a good picture of what the field looks like Um, you know with frost you will want to wait a few days until the crop is actively growing again um, before you make a decision on on what's going to live and what's going to die uh, sometimes canola looks pretty beat up and rough and actually it can bounce back and sometimes uh, sometimes it can't and you need to reseed. So, so you bring your hoop to kind of in, in one hand to, to help you get a good representative average but also because plant density is really important when you're looking at reseeding. Um, we recommend five to eight plants per square foot uh, as, a, as a plant density for canola. Um, that said, you know, we know that, uh, we know that yield predictability and stability really starts to come down around that three, four plants per square foot. That's sort of a shelf. doesn't mean that if you have fewer plants than that, you're going to have, um, you know, a disaster in the fall. It just means that it's very unpredictable and you're more likely to get a lower yield. So, so when you go walk and you're making a reseeding decision, we're in a suboptimal condition. So we're not looking at five to eight plants per square foot. Often, uh, you know, the most difficult decisions happen in that one to two plant per square foot range. Uh, and so really you want to get a look at the uniformity of, of the damage. So if you have big patches of, of no plants at all, perhaps you can just reseed those patches. If you have um, smaller patches of no plants at all, is the rest of the field going to be able to compensate? What's the weed pressure like? Um, you know, or if there was something like a seeding error, for example, or too hot a fertilizer that's really impacted what your emergence is, or even, you know, drought conditions as we've had for the past several springs. Um, you know, one or two plants per square foot can can often yield better than, than a crop that's planted sort of mid end of June. So. And when would you, yeah, exactly. When would you consider it to be too late to be reseeding? So yeah, in, in the southern the southern zone. Yeah, in the southern zone, like especially because we get really hot Julys here, so we can get some pretty significant pot abortion and, and flower blasting. Um, if we have really hot Julys, and then the later you seed, the more susceptible your canola is going to be to that. I mean, there's a bit of a 
trade-off, I guess, because if you seed a, a little bit later than the first week of May, like if you're still in May, you still have warm soils, right? Uh, or you've got warm soils, you might have good moisture, or this year at least we've got some decent moisture. So the crop might come up faster than it would in at the end of April. Um, so really, ideally, we want to seed canola that first week of May in southern Alberta. Um, but uh, as we're getting towards the end of May, or now it's early June, you really have to start thinking about the economics of what you're going to put in. If you're going to if you're going to reseed to something else, um, what's that going to be, and what's it going to pencil out to uh, as far as your bottom line? Um, and then if you're going to try and seed some patches, um, you know how are you going to manage those separately from the canola that's there? Usually, reseeding decisions are not like an easy decision where you walk through and you say, "Well, I have an average of a half a plant per square foot. I don't think I like this." It's generally you know, a nasty situation and you sort of have to weigh the pros and cons, like, can I manage my weeds effectively? Is, you know, is this crop just going to be a disaster to manage? Um, and on the other hand, if I reseed it and say put barley in, um, what's that going to make me at the end of the day? So, or if I'm going to reseed and try and put canola in, in again, is that just going to be struggling to get through the season and then, you know, potentially deal with getting snowed on in the fall, which we know is not the most pleasant scenario. And as far as herbicides go, do you have to worry about any herbicide residue if you are re if you've sprayed and now you're going back and you're reseeding? It depends. I mean, if you're if you're spraying if you're seeding canola again, um, then then you should be okay. But really, I would recommend checking all of your product labels, keeping really good and accurate records um, with your sprayer, and then going back and checking the individual chemistries that have been applied because, um, yeah, that's that's never a pleasant uh, situation to be in. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, so also, it's really important um, when you're going out and you're doing these assessments um, and, and you're counting plants, um, that our plant density recommendations are for that two to four leaf stage. So if you have a lot of cotyledons um, sitting there, then, then all the plants haven't come up yet, probably. Um, and you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be using that as a, as a representative number. Also, um, you want to make sure you're not counting volunteers in that number. Um, and then any time that you're looking at emergence, you need to look at the ab above ground growth, um, but also you want to really be digging down in the rows and making sure there's no canola still coming, especially, you know, if you've had some rain recently, um, then perhaps there's canola that's gotten started and hasn't come up. So if the plants aren't there, you want to figure out why they're not there, find some seeds, find some seedlings, see if there's any disease, see if there's some sort of mechanical damage or if there's frost or, or wind damage or something like that and really like understand and diagnose the problem. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome.